the things I'm most interested in are trying to understand the effects of human-induced changes on natural systems. I've spent about 25 to 30 years working on water rights in particular and how you value water in different parts of the world. Um, but the computational skills that I developed to, to overcome some of the challenges associated with big data sets um, have led to a variety of other research projects. And one of the ones I'm most excited about is a brand new project for me in the area of Chagas disease. I'm Donna Rizzo. I'm a professor in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department, and I'm also a GUND Fellow. Hi, I'm Laurie Stevens. I'm a professor in the Department of Biology at the University. Hi, I'm Patricia Dorn. I'm a professor of Biological Sciences at Loyola University, New Orleans, and I'm also adjunct at University of Vermont. So Chagas disease is, is particularly important. It's, it's um, the most serious parasitic disease in Latin America. So there's seven to eight million people infected with the Chagas parasite, and it's more significant parasitic disease than all the other ones put together. So malaria, schistosomiasis, onchocerciasis, all of them, it has a greater economic impact. About 13,000 people die every year of Chagas. So one of the things about Chagas is it's what's called a neglected tropical disease. So even though, as Patricia pointed out, there's so many people that are suffering from it and dying annually, it really hasn't received a lot of research and attention. And the reason for this is because it occurs in rural poor communities. And that's why such an important part of our focus is on developing sustainable methods that are low cost and easy to implement in these communities. Chagas disease is caused by a trypanosome parasite and it's similar to the parasite that causes African sleeping sickness which is something that more people have heard about. But this is a um, version of that parasite that occurs in the Americas. The program we're funded from from the National Science Foundation was developed in order to um, study infectious diseases and one of the unique things about the program is that it combines data collection with modeling and it was a program that really brought modeling of infectious diseases to be a science of, in and of itself and has really developed the field and there's beginning to be an increasing appreciation of the role of ecosystems in people's health anywhere from their mental well-being to their physical well-being to infectious diseases so we need you know a combination of people with different expertise in order to look at things in a ecosystem and an eco-health type approach. This is truly probably one of the most interdisciplinary projects that I've ever worked on, but more importantly, this research couldn't be done without these different disciplines. This new project is a multidisciplinary, um, multinational project, so we're working with people around, around the world and with all of our complementary expertise. So Carlota is a medical entomologist and she heads up uh, collecting the bugs in Central America. She also has just wonderful relations to the villagers and she has adapted an eco-health approach to combating Chagas disease. So for years people said, oh you can't improve houses, it's just too expensive. But she worked with architects, engineers, sociologists, anthropologists for a couple of years and developed a method to improve the houses that not only make them refractory to the kissing bugs, these bugs that carry the Chagas parasite, but also reduce soil transmitted helminth infections and improve quality of life on, on lots of different measures. The point of the EcoHealth initiative is to actually take and remove the hiding places of the vector in the houses and so that way, instead of having to spray the houses with insecticide to get rid of the vector, you make it so that the vector doesn't even want to live there in the first place. So the vectors live in the cracks and crevices of adobe houses, and they also lay their eggs on the, on the dirt floors. And so by putting plaster on the walls and by making a cement floor, you make the house refractory to the insects and therefore not only end up reducing Chagas disease, but also the people have a nicer home after this eco-health intervention. So we actually developed an, an eco-health video. Um, we went last the Mardi Gras break and filmed the villagers improving their houses in a step-by-step -step instructional video 
and this is now in the hands of the Ministries of Health in Central America, and they're taking it to these rural villages and showing it at, at night and teaching people how to improve their own homes. So it's really scaling it up. One of the aspects of this project is to measure the effectiveness of these eco-health interventions. So again, Carlota does the field work, and she also, we have an extensive sociological questionnaire, which is a real strength of our project. Uh, many projects don't also include the sociological aspects. She collects all that data. We enter it into a database program so it can be shared with everyone. Lori and Sarah and I are looking at the genomics of the, the kissing bug vector, the insect vector, as well as the parasite. And we're feeding all that information to Donna, who's developing the computational tools to actually model transmission risk. You really need, people are terming it now, big data. This is one of the few data sets because of the genomics and SNP data that's in, involved in it, because of all the socioeconomic surveys that Carlota and her group has been collecting. This makes this data set so unique and we have it over longer periods of time than the extension of most National Science Foundation grants, which makes it extremely valuable to extract meaningful information and hopefully actually have an impact the modeling would actually maybe have an impact on what's being done in the field. The more exciting modeling part of this for me was the fact that they had a data set that consisted of eight years of monitoring the spraying of these homes and then coming back and looking at the rebound effects of these insects and the fact that these in eco health interventions were actually made affordable and, and possible for the people living in this particular village is, what's, is what allowed, after two sprayings, these infestation rates to drop to less than 2% and stay there. For over an eight year period, that was kind of unheard of. The fact that you can invent computational methods that can find a happy medium between these solutions. Nobody's happy in multi-objective optimization problems, but you spend a lot of time coming up with solutions and then offering them back to the community. And when they decide which solution they want to work on, or they want to accept, I can pretty much tell them what the cost of clean water is in that particular location. They uh, have lots of multi-objective problems with lots of different stakeholders and it's one of the areas that I really hope that we can expand with this particular project and actually um, I'm hoping some of the sociological data will highlight some of those kind of contradictions that we have all the time whenever there's fights over water rights or whether there's fights over land issues or in this particular case, the cost to make sure that people are safe from Chagas disease, those are always diametrically opposed objectives and it's, it's, it's really fun to work with computational tools that try to get at solutions um, to fix those, fix that kind of complexity.